So, hello and welcome to this redesign video of Rosemary from High Guardian Spice, as you can tell. I'm going to kind of talk you through the changes that I've made, and um, that includes both the character and the show, because I'm actually going to rewrite the entire first season in a very rough draft. I'm not going to go into much detail and or um, make an episodical overview yet, maybe later, not yet, and you can just come in here, sit down, listen to me talk, do whatever you want while I do that. Um, we're just going to watch this speed paint of Rosemary, since that is the character we're discussing in this particular video. I want to say that I will change a lot of the world and broader strokes of the plot, but I am going to keep most of the characters bases just as they are. Like Rosemary is still um, a knight and still wants to be a knight, Sage will still be a mage just like Thyme is still a rogue elf. I might change Parsley more, but we'll get into that once we're into that. Now we have just about 25 minutes to talk about Rosemary and the broad strokes of the changes I'm going to make to the overall plot. For that, I have written out a very short season one overview. It doesn't go into a lot of detail, but just so you know what I'm trying to do, I'm going to read that out now. Rosemary, Sage, Parsley and Thyme all come to the High Guardian Academy, seeking truths and education on their respective fields of interests. There, they have to find that not everything is as easy as expected, as personal interests and the clash of new and old magic creates tension inside the academy, and old interspecial conflicts make communication between groups littered with obstacles. On top of that, an unknown force tries its hardest to get behind the walls of the city, and more importantly, the academy, sending monsters and magical curses to wreak havoc in search of an ancient relic that lies hidden in the city's catacombs. At the end of a grand fight, that breaks through the Academy's gates, Rosemary is faced with a tough decision, redefining the path of her future. So as you can tell, it is quite dramatic. I, I'm going to try to age up the tone of the show, because right now it's a mess, as literally everybody has already pointed out. If you're searching for a review or something like that, I'm not doing that here. I'm really just going to rewrite and redraw these characters and redesign them. I don't really care about everything that's been said already. You can check that out by literally any other person and you're free to do so. No hard feelings. If that's what you're searching for, then that's great. This video is really just come here, chill, listen, watch if you want to. Everything else is fair game. So now that we've covered that, as you can tell from the kind of plot rewrite, it is still following the same guidelines that the show has put into place. We are going to see all these four main characters come to the academy, we are going to see them go on various different um, small missions and you know, become friends, become closer to each other. So that's all going to stay in the show. That's not something I want to change. I still want it to be heavily focused on friendship, which will be important, especially for season two, because that's something I've planned too. If, I mean, this is not going to be anything, but if I had to write this, I would stretch the plot on to multiple seasons, obviously. And this first season would be a lot of build-up and the final episode would be a very big fight that happens in the city and that will pave the way for a second season and especially the four main characters going off on an adventure alone and exploring the world more because as far as I've seen from the very menial world building that has been done in the show, um, we don't really know a lot about the world and I'd like to change that and that's where I would put in the second season 
Of course, it wouldn't be high guardian spice anymore if they leave the academy, but I think that way you keep the broad strokes of it and still have enough playing field to just build up the characters and then the world. Would I change the title if I was to write this show? Yes, but that's a different story. So now I'm going to go into who Rosemary is in my rewrite, as you've seen in the video, if you're watching. Um, she is uh, just about 18 year old. She has a pretty strong physique. She is a warrior. That's very important to me. She is a warrior. Um, and she has built up that skill. She really has worked hard to get to where she is now. And that is, let's getting into backstory. Her mother still died when she was just about seven or eight years old. And her mother was the knight of the family, which in turn means that her family after her mother's death was kind of left with little resources because a knight's title isn't inherited. You don't keep it in the family. Once the person who holds the title of knight dies, that title goes to whoever is next available. And that is definitely not Rosemary because, like I said, she was just about eight. What Rosemary's goal is in season one, and that is the big reason why she actually goes to High Guardian Academy, is that she wants to regain that title for her family. Her father can't do it. He isn't a warrior, he's more of a farmer, and he's a little bit pampered, he doesn't really like fighting and he doesn't want to kill. However, Rosemary has spent all her young life idolizing her mother to no end, even though she was a lot like she was gone a lot she wasn't there a lot because of her nightly duties but all the stories that rosemary heard about her really inspired her and from from the beginning she was i want to be a knight i want to be like my mother once my mother retires i'm going to take over her title and i'm going to be the next big knight in the country because her mother is still a very famous knight However, when her mother dies, everything changes. They have to move out of the castle. They have to move into a very small hut, just enough space for her, her father, and her small brother. And it's at the outskirts of the town where they live in. They have to go hunting. Like, that's what she does a lot. And her father does a lot. Um, he goes hunting has to kind of learn his way around traps and all that uh, to ensure that his children are cared for because that's the only thing he can do. Um, so he does that to feed them through the winter. Meanwhile, Rosemary is very upset by the whole situation and the way that she deals with it is wanting to kind of make her mother alive again by becoming the night that she thought her mother was if that is accurate like maybe her mother was somebody completely different we don't know rosemary doesn't know she just has this very idolized vision of her mother so even as a sh small child when she's like nine or ten years old she goes to a night that her mother was really close to and begs him to take her in as a page so that she might learn how to be a knight and regain her family name and that's what she ends up doing she becomes a page and for the next 10 years she works underneath this knight who teaches her all the ins and outs of what it means to be a knight what you have to do how to follow orders how to relay orders what it um, needs to feed an army or a small like fighter group forgot the terminology there is a terminology I forgot it doesn't really matter what it really means to be not really home anywhere because in this world knights do travel around a lot they don't really stay in one place for too long when there's something when there's an issue to take care of they take care of it and that's what she's been doing since she was eight years old and that's also 
why she then goes to the academy, because while this knight could teach her a lot about the ins and outs of what it is to be a knight, he didn't have time to teach her the in-depths um, of languages. She, uh, he wasn't able to provide her with the time to really study pretty easy things like calculus. He just didn't have the time for that, and she never expected that of him. So what their compromise was is that now that she's 18, she will go to this um, academy and learn all everything that he couldn't teach her. And that's what she does. She goes to the academy to learn all about maps, all about the kingdoms that surround the kingdom that she grew up in. There she will learn more languages of the elven folk, of the dwarves, of the mountain trolls, whatever. I haven't really figured that out yet, but that's basically what she is going to do there. She's also going to learn like more um, business related things, like what money it needs to feed a farmer's town that didn't have a good harvest, stuff like that. Just taking care of an estate is what she's going to learn there. And also one really important thing, how to utilize battle mages or mages in general in battle or other things and other aspects of life. Just anything that a might, knight might need that she hasn't yet learned, she's going to learn there. So that's what she does, she goes there. And that's where she will meet Parsley, that's where she will meet Thyme, and where she will re-meet Sage, because in my version they used to be childhood best friends before uh, Rosemary's mother died. Once she died, Rosemary had to move away of the main city of this country, which name I forgot, which is very professional, I know. Um, and Sage was kind of left behind, and for a long time, Rosemary didn't have the luxury of thinking about that, just as much as she didn't really have the luxury to explore a lot of her emotions. Which is why, nowadays, she's pretty closed off. She keeps all her anxieties to herself, she keeps a lot of her, like, happiness to herself and her anger too. The So she comes off as very cold, which isn't really how Sage remembers her, obviously, because that's not how she was when she was a child, where she was very idealistic, where she wasn't really aware of how hard it really can be to be a knight in a magical country. So Rosemary has changed a lot, she's emotionally closed off, she is very good at following orders, and she's very good at making orders. However, she gets pretty snappy when people don't follow her orders, which obviously creates tension between the group because just because Rosemary is a knight in training doesn't mean that anybody else has to listen to her, and that's fair. But she kind of has to learn that, even though in her opinion she's not better than them because of it, she's rather more knowledgeable in things like strategy, which is fair, but she kind of has to learn that not everybody grew up that way, and that maybe treating people with a little bit of kindness is going to go a lot longer away than just telling them to do whatever she wants them to do, because she thinks that's best in the moment. However, she does care, like, if you're hurt and she's around, she will make sure that you're okay, that you get the treatment that you need. She'll just do it in a way that you feel she's just barking orders at you, which she kind of is, because that's how she grew up in. And Sage obviously is not that way. She got to grow up with both her parents. She got to grow up in a garden full of herbs and surrounded by very kind magic which means that they have a lot of figuring out to do, what relationship, um, what concerns relationships, because they knew each other, but they don't know each other now, and 
they want to rekindle. I really want that to be a big focus of it, that they do want to rekindle their relationship, they just kind of have to figure out how and if it's worth it. Because just because you knew somebody when you were a child doesn't mean they're still the person you need now that you are older. And that will create a lot of tension just between the two, trying to figure out their relationship, all that stuff. And clashing, obviously. I'm going to go into Sage more in her own video, but I've already covered that. So, yeah. That's all I think I have to say for now. Which I think brings me to Rosemary's role in the story. So, now that we've kind of covered her emotional state, let's say it like that, um, what I really want to get it go in on in the rewrite, and if that ever happens to be a more solid thing, I'm going to tell you and, I don't know, maybe put it on AO3 or something. I'd write it if I was to do that, but yes, focusing on her story. Yeah, she would learn a lot at the academy, both how to kind of engage with people who didn't live such an isolated life as she did. She has gone through a lot more than usually a child would go through, simply by being on the road a lot and fighting a lot and even the other knights in training that go to this academy haven't really gotten to her extent because usually they are children of nobles who are second or third in line so they won't inherit a lot from their parents. Meanwhile she is the only one who would have inherited anything. Um, and they kind of just send their daughters or sons to peaceful nightdoms, I think you can call that, where everything is a little more chill, so there are a few who are like Rosemary, but not a lot. And one person that I really want to be on the same kind of cold-hearted, not cold-hearted, but cold level of rationale, in the story is time, so I do want them to build an actual very strong relationship just based on the fact that both of them have grown up in pretty rough environments and had to learn how to navigate a space that isn't really made for children. And they will form a relationship that will also feed into a little bit of jealousy with Sage because Sage really tries hard to get on Rosemary's emotional side and to really talk to Rosemary and trying to figure out the ins and outs of their relationship now and trying to define the new kind of traits that they have to deal with now that they've grown up. But Rosemary is pretty uncomfortable with emotions so she really tries hard to be there for Sage, but doesn't really want Sage to be there for her. So she will be an open ear for Sage to come to, but if Sage tries to say, hey, please talk about yourself, how have you been, what's your emotional state right now, that's something that Rosemary won't really like to get into. Meanwhile, Thyme, Thyme is still an elf, and in my rewrite she is a rogue, which I think she is also in the original, but in this one she's more of the the elven kind that doesn't live in high palaces. She rather lives in the suburbs, the elven equivalent for suburbs. I don't really know how to define it, how to define it properly yet, but Thyme is going to be a character who's also pretty cold, like she already is in the original. She will still deal with the rot that she deals with in the show, but instead of, like, not really pulling through with that, she is very adamant to fix it. She really wants to fix it. And that determinedness is something that Rosemary really appreciates in her, and tries 
or like is kind of attracted to not in a romantic or physical way just in a emotional way because thyme also keeps her emotions very close to her heart and rosemary feels more comfortable with that than she does with sage's very open state of emotions and that means that thyme and rosemary do go off kind of alone in missions that are meant for parsley sage thyme and rosemary kind of not to be condescending but more in the way of saying hey we know how to fight we know how to strategize we can do this you just chill we are going to keep you safe and that that's something that they really have to learn both of them that just because somebody doesn't know how to physically fight doesn't mean that they're useless in a fight and that will be a very big deal as an emotional like through line for the entire group to go through and also something that is going to be a learning curve for all of them thyme in this rewrite is more of a like cocky savage elf type of person she doesn't hold her tongue she doesn't like being talked down on she will find every way to make sure you know that she thinks lesser of you she has a little bit of a deal with the race that i'm going to make parsley that is one thing that i'm not sure on i have designed all the characters but parsley and i kind of want to make her something else than a dwarven blacksmith i want to keep the blacksmith part because i think that's really interesting for a character but i don't necessarily will keep the dwarven part so Whatever she ends up being, Thyme and her have history and have racial history that like elves don't get along with this particular species. And that will lead to more conflict within them. Parsley is also, I will keep her as a very emotional character. So basically it's Sage and Parsley pitted against Rosemary and Thyme and they get put together for a bunch of missions because they are very compatible in a fight if they would finally figure out how to do that. So that's kind of the basis of the emotional part of the story. Now that we've covered that, what's the finale? I think I went into it in the beginning a little bit. What is the finale going to be? As I have already stated in my very short overview of what season 1 would entail, the ending will be a very big fight where Rosemary's mother is sent out to retrieve this artifact and all the four... Oh yeah, I went into it in the season 2. Yeah, I remember. All the four main characters have to work together to defeat whoever is attacking, aka the evil guys, and... Rosemary is going to be faced with her mother and is going to be very conflicted because her entire life she has worked towards this woman, this ideal that she has had of it, and now she has to realize this woman that I thought was dead for multiple years is actually alive and kicking and on the side of the bad guys. How do I rec like reconcile that with myself? And in my rewrite, what that's going to lead to is Rosemary kind of in this last battle of the first season freezing up for the first time ever. Usually she's always had something to rely on, so she was always going on. She could always continue because there was somebody telling her what to do. There was somebody telling her where she would be safe. There was somebody she could rely on. And now she's faced with this ultimate challenge and she just kind of freezes up. She doesn't know what to do, and there's nobody to tell her what to do. This is a completely new situation, a situation that she has never encountered, never thought she would encounter. She was so convinced her mother is dead, and now there's this woman who doesn't recognize Rosemary, um, but looks like her mother, acts like her mother, talks like her mother, like the mother she remembers. The only difference is this woman is straight up evil. She has no remorse going around just fighting people left and right, people she knew the night that took 
Rosemary Inn is going to be there at this fight, because I think he travels enough to justify that, and he is going to fight this woman. He's going to also not be sure what he can do, because he knows her. He doesn't want to fight her, but she's adamant on fighting him. So this situation kind of kind of ticks Rosemary off into a, a small breakdown that leads to her freezing up mid-fight, not being able to defend herself or others, which will be the moment where Sage, Thyme, and Parsley kind of step in and say, hey, we're here for you, and we're going to protect you while this is all going on. And that's where we will end season one, actually. They protect Rosemary. Meanwhile, Rosemary has done all of these things to protect them. And for the first time, it's going to be, Ro be Rosemary being protected by everybody else. And the fight ends with the artifact being stolen. And that's where season one will end. Now we've already reached the end of this speed paint and you can see the finished result. I hope you like it. I'm sorry for this rather abrupt ending and thanks for enduring my voice. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, that's completely okay. If you did, leave a like. Talk to me in the comments. Um, since this is literally my first video, there's not going to be a lot going on there and that's completely fine. Hope you enjoyed it anyway and I wish you all a very nice day. I'm going to figure out timing a little better in the following videos whenever they will come.